Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that there's a new sharpening tool in Photoshop? It's actually Topaz Labs Sharpen. Now it's not something that you have to purchase separately. It doesn't work as a plugin. It's actually built into Photoshop, although it's not totally free. It does use generative credits. As a matter of fact, it uses premium generative credits. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to this website. Here, you could see how many generative credits it uses. Just scroll down to the middle section. At the bottom of the middle section, you'll see there's a section, Topaz Labs, Gigapixel, Sharpen, and Denoise. And you'll notice that if your image is up to 25 megapixels, it's going to cost you 10 credits per generation. If it's above 25 and lower than 56, it's going to cost you 20 credits per generation. So it uses quite a few credits. Now you may be wondering, how big is my image? Well, it's very easy to figure out. With an image opened in a photo into Photoshop, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, you should see the dimensions of your image down here. If you don't, click this little right-hand facing arrow and make sure that you're showing document dimensions. And you'll notice for this specific image, it's showing it to be 5568 by 3712. If I take those two numbers and multiply them together, I'll get the size of my image in pixels. If I divide that number by 1 million, I'll have the size of my image in megapixels. And I did the method ahead of time. This image is 20.66 megapixels. So this image will cost me 10 credits to use Sharpen on it. Now, with that said, how do you use it? Well, it's up here in the filter menu. If you go up to filter, you'll notice that it's right here, AI Sharpen. Now, the thing is, if I just apply it, it's going to be applied to the background layer. And usually we're trying to work in Photoshop as non-destructively as possible. So we don't want to apply any filters to the background layer. We want to apply it to a duplicate layer. To do that, hit Command or Control J on your computer and you'll duplicate the layers. Again, it's Command J if you have a Mac, Control J if you have a PC. Now we're going to apply the sharpening to this layer. Go up to Filter, then down to AI Sharpen, and then it tells you here this is Topaz Sharpen and that little crown meaning means that it's using premium credits and it's a partner model and it says it's naturally recovered detail and sharpness while reducing blur and shake. Well, let's see how good of a job it does. We'll click Sharpen. Now, as far as I know, it does all this work on your computer. It does not send your image up to Adobe servers. Also, it will try to find the subject in your image and apply the sharpening just to the subject. Now, those of you that have Topaz Lab Sharpen have a lot more features. This is like a bare bones stripped down version of Sharpen. If you actually have Topaz Lab Sharpen, you know that there's several different models. There's a lot of different ways you could apply masking, a lot of different things you could do. You could adjust each of the models. This is really just kind of a one click sharp. It's just going to do its best to find the subject and sharpen the subject. And you can see it takes a little while, but it's just finishing up now and now it's sharp. So let me give you a before after without zooming in. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. To zoom in, I'm going to get the magnifier tool by tapping the Z key. And because I have the scrubby zoom checked, all I need to do is click and drag my mouse to the right and I can zoom in. So here is the sharpened bird and there's the blurry bird. So that's after, before, after, before. Yeah, it worked. All right. And this wasn't no, a big deal. Like this was a pretty simple image. Let's try something a little more challenging. I was at the Buffalo Zoo and I took this uh, picture of the ocelot. And unfortunately, I obviously missed focus. Um, I was shooting through glass. It was kind of dark. And the ocelot was walking towards me. And you can see it's pretty blurry. So let's try it on this. Again, we need to duplicate that background layer because we don't want to apply the sharpening to the to the original layer. And then we're going to go up to Filter and then down to AI Sharpen, and then we're going to click Sharpen. And I will pause the recording so you don't have to listen to me blabber on about nothing. And when it is done, we'll come back. 
Okay, it's just finished, and as you can see, it is sharper, but really, is it any good? Let's zoom in a little bit here, and here is a before, and there's an after. Now, it's definitely sharper, but I don't like what it did. I don't think it did a very good job as far as making it look realistic. It just doesn't look right. So I wasted 10 generative credits sharpening this, because judging by the size of this image, it cost me 10 premium credits to sharpen this ocelot so there again there's before and there's after so yeah i didn't really uh like the results on that one now let's go to this image how good is it though at finding the subject uh, on this image it's pretty obvious to you and i what the subject is but the tree is there too and the tree is in the same focal plane as the uh, woodpecker and the tree is a little bit sharper than the woodpecker. If we zoom in, um, my, I probably grabbed focus more on the tree than I did the woodpecker. So how would it do on an image such as this? Well, let's see. Let's duplicate the background layer and hit Commander Control J. Let's go up to Filter and then down to AI Sharpen. And we'll click Sharpen. And again, I'm going to pause the recording and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, it just finished, and it did sharpen the bird, but it also sharpened the tree. Let me zoom in a little bit here, and then I'll give you a before and an after, and a before and an after. Okay, it's definitely sharper, but it did sharpen the tree as well. And in this case, for this specific image, it didn't really make too much of a difference. But for some images, you may not want it to sharpen anything but the subject. So what you can do is you could add a mask to this layer. So if I added a mask, what I would then do is just paint in black on the mask to remove the sharpening from where I don't want it. Also, something you could do is go up here to select and select the subject and see what uh, Photoshop thinks the subject is. You'll see that I have marching ants around the bird. Well, that's good. It found the subject fine. I want to now add a mask so that only the bird is sharpened. Because I have the bird selected, if I go down here and just click on mask, it will automatically mask it properly. Where white is on the mask is where the sharpening is being applied. And where black is, is where the sharpening isn't being applied. And it's letting the layer below it come through. So now, when I zoom in, you'll notice that the sharpening is still on the bird. But it isn't on the tree any longer. So a little tip there to help you maybe apply the sharpening more effectively. Let's say you don't want to use any generative credits and you really don't like what it's doing because it does sharpen, but you really have no control whatsoever. And for example, on that ocelot, I just wasted 10 generative credits on that. Maybe I wanted to use those for something else. Well, what I like to use is a high-pass filter. With high-pass filter, I usually could get very good results. Now, I have this image here. Um, you can see it's not really out of focus, but it, it could be improved. It could be better. So what I'm going to do is, again, duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J. Then I'm going to use a high-pass filter, which doesn't use any generative credits. To use it, go up to Filter, then down to Other, then over to High Pass. Now, this filter might be a little tricky to use because, as you can see, it turns you know, it's kind of this weird gray kind of rendition of your image. What you want to do is you want to adjust the slider so that you're just kind of seeing edges. Like you don't want it all the way down where you're not seeing any edges and you don't want it all the way up where you're seeing like every single edge possible. It's once it renders, are you seeing the actual image? So you want just enough of it to see edges. Now, the more you use this tool, actually, the better you'll get at using it. So you kind of move it around. You also could go up here and you could move this little preview window around or you have this kind of little square let's say you want to make sure that the eye of the bird is sharp just click on the bird and it will reposition this so you're seeing the eye of the bird and that might help you better adjust this i think somewhere around 5.6 is good so when you're happy with that click ok now what you need to do is change the blend mode of this layer to do that go up to this drop down and change it to overlay this is our sharpened image so if i zoom in and scroll down 
and I give you a before and an after. Maybe I over sharpened it just a little bit, but it looks pretty decent. There's before and there's after. Now this is being applied everywhere. So if you do want to apply it just to the subject, what you can do is make sure you're clicked on the actual pixel image. So that means the background layer. So we're on that. Then again, go up here to select and then again, select the subject. It's going to take a second, but it should find the subject fine because the subject's pretty isolated from everything else. Once it has found the subject, click again back on your sharpen layer, then apply the mask. And again, it's only going to let in or let through on the sharp layer what the subject is. And that's what we want. So apply the mask and you could see that our mask is properly applied. Wherever white is, is the sharpened part. Wherever black is, isn't sharpened. And then you could zoom in again. And then you'll see a before after. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Even though I over sharpened a little bit, I think I like the high pass rendering of sharpening a bit better than the topaz sharpen version. Um, of course, it's subjective. That's not an objective opinion. That's just my personal um, opinion. So that's how you use uh, Sharpen that is built into Photoshop. Again, it uses a generative credits. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website and you could check out everything they're charging you for here. So check this out. And hopefully this um, helps you decide whether or not, first of all, whether or not you want to use it. And then secondly, how to use it if you do want to use it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.